All right, guys, so I saw this video here. I'm gonna demonstrate to you. Uh, and I said to myself, let me give my uh, five minutes. Let me give you a comment on this. It's called Battle for Africa. And it's from the Russia Today, from the RT, from the Russian RT. And it caught my attention. I wanted to see this video. I uh, want to see this with my own eyes. I'm doing it for the second time. Somehow it's tough the first time. Uh, you see the guy screaming down with the friends and so on. Yeah. I was involved in this documentary. The main star of this documentary, I was the one. I was not the only star, the main star in this video. You cannot see me. I was the main star probably in some thousand documentaries like this one here. This too probably uh, should catch your attention. Every person that you see is talking in this camera like this lady even here that is screaming. Not only the reporters here that you want to see, Russian reporters, uh, politicians, these two guys, you see these two guys? All these people are involved in this documentary. No. This guy and this, whatever is going to come to everybody, you understand? All these people that you see, everything throughout the documentary, except for those crowds that you see protesting over there, all these students, all these, all these people are involved in MK Ultra. I think it's crucial that he's screaming at the United Nations, maybe or something, he was not involved in it, all right? And uh, because I was the number one star, the big star of this video, and because I was a big superstar, not only in the Russian video, as you see here, uh, but Russians learned on how uh, from a British, from the Britons, from the BBC, uh, which was the documentary supermaker, yes, because of these things, uh, and because I want to help people of Africa as much as I possibly can, uh, because of my involvement in all this stuff, I have decided to we'll give you five minutes. Um, this five minutes might actually change and make all the difference in your existence, my dear friends in Africa, wherever you are. Uh, this may be the only five minutes. I'm going to call this five minutes, this comment of mine on this video, that you will get as far as a sincerity that is maybe crucial for your existence. Um, it's like this. Now you're gonna see me, I'm gonna turn the camera on. Hello. Just like in Syria, where as a Syrian, you seriously, most seriously, have a choice. You get to choose about which side do you prefer to bomb you, to throw you, to load you, to, to throw the, to dump the bombs on your houses, on your cities. Eh? You have a choice. Well, you can choose, of course. Uh, to be bombed by the Russians uh, or you can choose to be bombed by American as a Russian ally yeah uh, and the thing about my dear African people is that as long as you don't see yourself and it goes the same to the Syrian people God will not help you uh, this documentary because the way they have used me like let's say at the BBC not only at Russia Today 
You see, this is another proof about the Russo-American and other collaboration, cooperation, yeah? Uh, how the MK Ultra went on, you know, beginning my age four. You know, it, it was at, at my age four, at my age six, that Queen Elizabeth and Princess Anne insisted on, uh, you know, the teachers in, in, in a grammar school, when I entered first, when they told me this is a special class, it's called the MK Ultra class, 1A, 1A is connected to the police department, local police department, they told me, they said to me, they said to me, you know, Abushtian, this is very difficult, if you don't, if you cannot, we advise you to change, there's children that go to other school, this was another school here, it's not only Osnona Shola Gurum, it's another school here, it's called Katia Rupena, you know, but we were right next to school, school, probability I would change the school, which was like five minutes away from my home, it did not exist, my parents would not, it was just too much convenient, and well, the class where I landed was the deadliest one, and you know, when it all started, and I found myself all of a sudden in Moscow, and from Moscow they transferred me to the United States of America and to the greater of the Great Britain, and to the Germany and to other countries. You see, the thing is that the teachers in school, they told me, uh, they kind of signaled that Russia was uh, like this, but they signaled uh, for the different countries, they openly talk to us, the teachers. For Britain, that is very, very nice, but it's like only for the good children and stuff like this. And then sometimes at age eight, the Princess Anne, age seven, Princess Anne and Queen Elizabeth uh, started to literally mess with, due to degree of violence that was taking place, the degree of violence that started to take place against me at age four in early childhood, you know? Uh, it went from the private care into a kindergarten, uh, it was a wife from the Yugoslav military officer that was my babysitter and stuff like that. Uh, and. Uh, You wouldn't want any of that stuff. You wouldn't want that. You wouldn't want your child in there, man. Uh, you wouldn't want to do that to your child. Uh, you see, the thing is that they started to mess with the hope. Engaged in extreme forms of violence. The violence was extreme. And they were exchanging different all kinds of issues interjecting into it of which one was like oh but britain is nice and you need to, to be a good student you need to behave yourself good maybe and for the best students they take them inside and so on and so forth <laughs> they didn't take to my knowledge the students to britain uh, they did they my schoolmates got a special kind of tratma. Uh, they had all kinds of games for the ZX Spectrum and Atari and music was there and all kinds of gifts and all kinds of stuff. The parents were buying through the local stores here. The stores got all kinds of American stuff, British. You're like you would not believe the kind of stuff, but they give me some kind of examples to how the children stayed even in Britain and it was so fantastic. But you know, the thing is when I requested to stay there due to the degree of violence in Slovenia, especially in Russia, when they would hijack me to Moscow from Slovenia, from so-called Yugoslavia. We were in Yugoslavia back then. There was nothing. The only thing it was, they, they were playing with the hope, basically, with it as a child that they start to drive me insane. And it's important for you in Africa. Uh, and it's kind of a difficult. This is why this five minutes. I imagine, because when you are coming from a poor background, uh, impoverished background, when you're coming from disadvantaged environment, 
uh, even from environment which was uh, subject to colonization in the past, uh, to overcome all these issues on your way to prosperity. Prosperity, that's basically what I see as a success. And it doesn't matter what it is, but when it comes to prosperity, it's always equals to success. Yeah, For you to understand, and I don't mean to put anybody down, because I know there is successful people in Africa. Uh, I see that there are young people, they demonstrate uh, in Spain, in Italy, that they, 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 they criticize them. They, it's how that, you know, portray them like they have money and, and stuff like this because they wear Nike and uh, shoes with the brands, uh, pants and so on, Levi's, that they're well dressed and so on. I think it's a horse shit. It's, 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 it, the fact of the matter is that everybody wants to be successful and people in Africa also simply dress, you know, refuse to dress as a poor people, they just want to be successful. Everybody wants to have something that gives him some kind of a characteristic, something that can see himself in a mirror or in some way that something about one is successful, God forbid. And I know about these things because all my watches were ripped apart. If you notice, they ripped me clothing, they ripped me watches, they destroyed me everything, underwear, uh, whatever they possibly could to destroy me, you know. Yeah. So I don't mean to say that because of your background that anything would be wrong with you, that you couldn't, you know, accomplish something or something like that. But exactly the opposite. I think that you are a potential and that regardless of your poverty, regardless of your uh, colonial past or whatever, uh, you must strive forward unconditionally and pursue your right to existence best to your abilities. Today it's about existence. Today it's not about anything other than existence. The thing is, is that in this more and more competitive world, we're going to talk about in continuation, it's more and more and more about existence. And when I said about more and more competitive world, um, let's go to uh, when I said successful, uh, prosperity, success issue. Uh, I want to clarify immediately that what makes the person successful or a nation successful or a continent successful is actually many people would be surprised I'm going to be surprised about what I'm going to state but it's 90% that makes person successful is actually ability to connect itself to reality. Therefore, expectations based on reality. Reality is about 90%. Okay, let's say one dollar, one cent, you need 100 cents for one dollar. I'm sure you understand the issue. Uh, per cent, is one cent per cent is one out of 100 so you need 90 pieces out of 100 out of the whole thing 90 pieces out of 100 is what makes person successful only 10 percent only 10 percent is what makes the person successful if let's say this 10 percent that's left right out of 190 is realism realistic expectations only 10 percent are work ethics only 10 percent are work ethics yes, this is the reason why i'm recording this video for you for you in africa uh, I, I'm not happy with this kind of brainwash, 
and I want you to open your eyes and listen to me very careful because this is video that will make all the difference in this world whether you're going to exist or you will indefinitely fail. In this world, in this Vladimir Putin's world, this violent world, this world of psychiatry in my case, when I watch those people in this video, I remember how they hated me and stuff, how they presented me to these people and I was drugged up and so on. And they did not necessarily hate me, but to get financial means, just like at BBC, you remember the issue when I said about the choice, preference, as per who would you prefer to bomb your home in Syria? Uh, it's extremely, extremely important that your expectations, therefore your reality, really is matching the expectations. In this ever-changing, fastly changing world, as where we live at today, nothing is more important than reality. And every little lie makes a tremendous difference in the lives of people on a broader and a bigger scale. That's why I would even advise African people in this video to actually protest uh, and uh, maybe maybe even feature me in, in a Mali uh, all over the TV. That would be really, really helpful to every home, to every household to hear my words to every person in Africa, I think, uh, so that that you would that you would truly see yourself. This is about Africa only, you know. It's about the entire world, actually. You would truly, tr really see yourself in a mirror for what you really are, because that's actually what finally is going to make you successful. I should say, prosperous. In this ever-changing world, uh, finally. Uh, it's machines that are going to take over a manual labor. You can trust me on that. That's why I said that work ethics, when it comes to work ethics, hard work, uh, it's extremely, extremely limited and it's becoming more and more limited. Uh, in today's world, it's actually uh, a, a, the biggest commodity uh, the importance of commodity is your land, your national sovereignty, and your national sovereignty does not depend more than on what I previously have stated to you, is about being realistic of your expectations. If you will allow uh, for somebody to uh, massage you with the lies and a hatred to take over, uh, you're going to find yourself, well, very quickly going to find yourself in an Alice of Wonderland uh, that is going to create just bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger chaos. And that's something that the Russians, which learned this stuff in many ways from the West, uh, who definitely took them on board already during the Soviet Union, they're going to melt you down, boy. They, you're, going to, you're going to disappear in this chaos. It's like you never fucking existed on the first place. Do you understand? In today's world, the very, very important is being realistic of your expectations. Uh, what to expect for what amount of work, amount of effort that you invest. So the first thing that we cleared out is probably the most important one in this video. Uh, we talk about being realistic. The importance of being realistic. Things are going to change. In this ever-changing world, you can find 10 people. And I guarantee you, tomorrow, one of those 10 people that's going to be the hardest working person, whoever owns that company, is going to fire even the most hard-working people because it's going to need a person that is going to work harder or it's going to be younger uh, or maybe it's going to even need to whack those 10 people and like Vladimir Putin let's say did during construction over there in uh, 
along the Black Sea coast, so you use those people to do construction, then the only thing that happened was the people all of a sudden disappeared and they cemented them alive and stuff like this. So they didn't have to pay them no wages, no social security, no shit. It's all kinds of stuff that's happening. You understand it's not in Russia only, it's all over the world. Maybe in the United States of America more than anywhere. People in the United States of America actually are thought to hate social security, which is like pretty crazy stuff when you consider that most often it's only the social security they end up with. It did their retirement age and most of American people don't even get to retirement age because they end up under the bridges, homeless inside of the forests. Under extremely difficult circumstances is what I'm trying to say. Um, lucky are those that can afford themselves to pay for the rent and for the food at their retirement age and maybe even live a little longer. And yes, there are people that get extra checks from a special private funds to invest and all kinds of stuff like this, but that's not the reality. The reality, the bottom line is that there is a minimum wage and there is wage that is constantly advertised in, a, in the newspapers, in the media uh, for what is the standard of the society, standard of the society, who else, what else, average, this is a police officer, fireman, about, we're talking about 30, 35,000, 40,000, and so on and so forth, and back and forth for the cost of their relatives being unemployed. Uh, if you're in another profession, um, you get the job, you work some time, and, uh, then you don't have the job for some time and it's saving that was and is not and back and forth and credit cards and all kinds of shit that's added to the life that you don't actually need but through this chaotic shit we live in uh, it's all blended maybe that's why I said even more successful at it than Russia maybe is United States West and so on the more the exploitive the more chaotic the more uh, cheating, misleading, the more it is successful. The system, unfortunately, these days, it's got to do everything with realistic expectations, realism, being realistic, and less and less every day, less and less, unfortunately, with a work ethics. Yeah, It used to be that after World War II, Germany would take workers from all over the place, uh, Turkish, Italian, Yugoslav, uh, the thing is that <laughs> no longer was like that. You know, the economy upgraded and the factor is um, rather than taking more and more people in South of work, uh, found themselves in a cheaper environment, in a cheaper locations, in, um, and the people that would still come in, they would use them to build uh, connections uh, from uh, through bringing them into the system, teaching them the language, and then transform basically in their own environments and basically use them as communication, as a mean, as a, a trolley, if you like, or card uh, for financial, so therefore economical and other relations, maybe a military, whatever. Uh, it, so it's it's a different time. Everything is changing. The economies are upgrading. It's no longer about work so much. Uh, it is more about technology, about different kind of performance. It's about the contacts. It's about making contacts with the people, using people, workers from abroad, luring certain people, certain structures of the population to build certain geo-economical uh, basis in a certain areas of the world, platforms based on which then they continue to develop this bigger and bigger mechanism. Uh, it's this day it's about building tanks. Uh, defense equipment is a thousand times more lucrative than what used to be, let's say, a beautiful Volkswagen Golf uh, made in Deutschland or BMW or Mercedes, where 
uh, let's say a Turkish guy working on assembly line and so on. These things are now already in other countries where it's cheaper workforce, where it's, it's different and uh, it's not bad, it's good, I'm not criticizing anybody, I'm just giving you my five minutes about more and more and more competitive, therefore the workforce, technology is going to replace, unfortunately, people, more and more and more people, more and more uh, labor, you understand, labor. So, the expect re reality, realism, being realistic is becoming is biting more and more and more and more and more and more. When I saw this video, this from the Russia today, RT video, and this is not against the Russian people, please, God forbid. Maybe, who knows, somebody even have a Russian child in this life. Who knows? Uh, but the politics Vladimir Putin have aligned itself with this got nothing to do, uh, therefore the Russia has nothing to do with what Soviet Union used to be, you know. Russia was the biggest state uh, minority in the Soviet Union uh, and did a lot of good things. It's not everything bad about the Soviet Union. I am going to get to the Soviet Union uh, and will criticize one. Uh, I shouldn't say criticize, but I need to point out certain issues that are blatantly evident uh, are not as you know, these people, the RT or whatever, these reporters and so on are trying to portray view, the whole view as uh, you know, Soviet Union beat, uh, built and uh, you know, uh, universities and uh, help uh, with, uh, you know, educated people and from China especially and uh, you know, Eastern Europe and Africa and uh, South America and, you know, they did these things, you know, they, they actually helped in many ways uh, for worlds eventually to get a better place. There is no doubt that Soviet Union had its legacy, but you have to be uh, aware that a USSR, or I should say, um, was not alone in this stuff. It was known also as a Warsaw Pact. A Warsaw Pact involved also Poland, which was occupied by the US Soviet troops. It involved Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, uh, Czech Republic, Slovakia. Finally, Yugoslavia was directly not, but it was the same thing. So you, you, you're talking about a lot of other countries that contributed to the Soviet economy, which did change, shape the world from, you know, contributed a lot uh, to colonial transition into semi-democracy is what I would refer to as what we have today in Africa uh, more than anywhere else in the world because in China we have already the country that started to uh, rather shape the world with its presence and so India is also shaping the world, these are already players, they started to shape the world, the countries, the major players that are heavily contributing to undeveloped part of the world. South America also did more or less, I wouldn't say well, I think extremely poorly uh, concerning the, uh, the natural resources, uh, but still it's you know, Africa is really, really, really in question. As I said, this is my five minutes. Hope it's going to change your lives, uh, your destiny in this more and more uh, exploitive and changing, fast changing world uh, where one is going to have a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger price. Really, it's going to be more and more difficult to be realistic about just about anything in this world in this artificial intelligence age as we know one world is going to be changing more and more and more uh, you know even human mind everything is being already replaced it's getting dangerous in this world it's not about the work ethics anymore uh, but as long as you have your state and uh, uh, you are realistic and have your realistic expectations 
uh, we can say that you have a steel brain inside of your head. Uh, still, nobody steal you the brain from your head. <laughs> I'm a little bit humorous here. Um, but literally, this is what this is how the world is becoming dangerous, more and more dangerous. One of the most dangerous players, and no wonder in this world, is Vladimir Putin. Uh, what the Putin has with reality is, well, your people from Africa that were involved in this documentary, and they were involved in maybe all the documentaries about Africa for the past 30 years that came out, where I was used as a main star, as a racist, as a Nazi, they presented me. I'm from Slovenia, you know, come on. I'm no British, I'm no German, uh, I'm no American, uh, I am naturalized American citizen, I'm a native of Slovenia, and don't feel good about saying this, but when you use me for such issues to present to the world as something that it's you who really had to do with, with colonialism, with slavery, with Nazism, and me, I, our people here, exactly zero, I just have to do it. This documentary is about being realistic, and for I have to remind you who you are, what you are, and who and what I am. So you might want to use your cast, your people that participate in this video, to give you a deep, deep, maybe counter argument to my video uh, for your own sake. Uh, Vladimir Putin. It's just one choice. It's got nothing to do with the Soviet Union. It's a totally different world. Uh, and it's up to you which, which one do you want to bite. You can bite a BBC, or you can bite a Russia Today, or you can bite whoever you want to bite. But still, the most important to your survival, success, prosperity, really, 90% will make successful person is be realistic about absolutely everything in your life, especially your, your expectations. Always be realistic about them. In a video that I have seen here, in this video that I have seen here, it is mentioned that some stupid, stupid stuff. Stupid, stupid stuff. Do you know why they use me for this stuff? I think I already have explained. They wanted you to associate yourself with either this option or that option or whatever option. And really, I want you to understand whatever option you're going to choose, make sure you keep in your mind my option. Uh, my option started at age four. At age four, if at the private care uh, where the Yugoslav military officer wife would take care of me, led me straight from this Yugoslav military officer uh, private child care into the kindergarten, chaotic kindergarten, uh, landed me straight in the Moscow and at age six found myself in Britain, in the United States of America, uh, basically, if you uh, like you deliver a cattle or something like this, uh, handled throughout the world like a commodity. Uh, found myself in a different situations, positions, locations, and at age seven, uh, actually at age six, the teachers at Osnona Shola Gurum that is a grammar school, Gurum in Novomesto, advised me that the class I am attending is a special MK Ultra class connected straight to the police station of Novomesto, of which, if I prefer not to be at, they advised me about how dangerous this is going to be, uh, would be probably better for me to settle in other school in area of the Novomesto. It's known as Osona Shola Katia Rupena, uh, however, that was not likely because I was only five minutes away from the school of Sona Shola Gurm. So it doesn't matter. It didn't matter. It couldn't uh, 
They also advised me that I could change the class and go to another class because they have A, B, C, D and so on. But I was a tough kid and I wanted to see what the hell, since it all started at my age four, like two years earlier, that's going to be like this MKL trend stuff that went on. Yeah. And so the journey went on, uh, even if I would change to another class, uh, probably nothing would ever change. Uh, it was known even for the grades that in other school, in other class, the grade would go up for 50% and in other school for another 50% if you would change the school. So for me, it was a war and the war started at age four. At age six, it was Queen Elizabeth, Princess Anne, who contrary to Slovenian teachers at age seven, yeah, that happened at age seven. Contrary to, to Slovenian teachers who, who insisted not, you know, I was excited about the Moscow where they would deliver me like a cattle, uh, suggested that in uh, Britain, however, where they already had me, uh, that it's nicer and so on and for the good students and this and that, you know, that kind of stuff. It would be also possible to stay in Britain and that kind of stuff. So this started to incite me to see the British way, whether I like it or not, through what was extreme forms of violence in Slovenia, in Yugoslavia, and also through the Soviet Union. Very, very important factors when you think about Syria, when you think about your documentary, when you think about other thousand documentary documentaries where they had me participate as a main star, use me to steer tensions and use the opportunities to espionage and divide and conquer society. Basically, that's how it works. Uh, regardless of the ticket you're going to choose, just remember it's 90% that makes successful, prosperous person the ability to relate to a reality. So I thought this would be important for me to state to you. And uh, when it comes to this documentary here, there is only a few things I'm going to say to you. Um, if Russia, because there was a comment in there, that there was a black guy, African guy, who stated, oh, because the Russia never uh, colonized Africa. Uh, the thing about it is that <laughs> if, you know, if, if, if Russia would colonize you in Africa? Uh, it's true, Russia never colonized Africa. The thing is that if, Afri if Russia would colonize you in Africa, you wouldn't even know today. What exactly I mean by this is that uh, I think it's an Inuit, like Alaskan people, like people in Greenland, uh, in throughout Siberia, uh, this is basically Asiatic, beautiful people, Many of these nations were reduced to nothing. That means that if they did colonize you, the chances are that you wouldn't even exist. And this is not fucking real. Very, very straight, I'm going to tell you. Ukraine was about twice as big as it is today. Uh, the prosperity that came to Africa, to uh, uh, South America, through the exchange of students, through, let's say, in Cuba, through all this assistance and so on, this came at a very, very high cost price to other Eastern European nations, Poland and all these nations were paying special tax, blood tax. And what went on inside of the Russia, uh, I should say Soviet Union, was simply a Russia is what went on, you know? <laughs> it came with a big tax, it came with a big price tag at expense of other nations inside of the Soviet Union that were, or I should say, inside of the prison of the nations known as Soviet Union. So you may want to consider what I stated. I am glad that you are excited about the Russia, uh, and you should be. You should be. I don't have, as I stated, I don't have anything against the Russia. I'm just warning you about being realistic, having realistic expectations uh, is the number one priority, basically, in all this mess, in this chaos. Um, then there was another comment, and 
Uh, what exactly was the comment? Uh, let's see this documentary. You know, I was talking to myself a little earlier, and I gave myself a really good comment and about all this stuff. Independence, yes, of course. Colonialism, yes, of course. We all know what that is. Uh, I have seen crazy stuff. I have give, seen completely insane stuff. They talk about Sergei Lavrov. They talk about Macron. They talk about the people, how they rushed to Africa as soon as the Russians appeared there. Come on. Uh, I already answered all that stuff. You get to choose in Syria which side is it that you prefer will throw the bombs on you. I couldn't be more direct about it. If you're not going to be intelligent, because they're talking about there was only 10 countries in Africa, and it came out as 55 in the end, uh, so 10 before the colonial colonialization, uh, they will rip you apart. If you will listen to me, as well as mine, it could happen again, you're going to have 10 countries. I am bringing you closer together to one another. So that's why I would say it's it's important that you listen to what I have to say to you. Don't be stupid. Don't don't go and start biting issues that really really are stupid issues. For example, in this documentary they they state that there was somebody who was a colonialist and it was involved in exploitation of the oil fields in Africa. Uh, and upon the independence, uh, he remained as a chief executive of the state oil company and such a stuff. The thing is, I'm going to say to you, um, I don't know who, who talks about that stuff, some Russian lady or whatever. The thing is, I'm going to very, very, very short. As I stated, it's good that you like Russia. You must like Russia. Uh, the thing is that Nobody in this world is exporting oil to the Russia. Russia is a hundred times bigger reservoir of oil than a Saudi Arabia is. Man, they have hundred times, if not thousand times bigger uh, potential, the mineral and stuff, nobody in the world has stuff like this, you understand? So, uh, naturally that you people in Africa, uh, because it's your market in Europe, that's where Russia is doing its best to export oil, yeah, if worse comes to worse, uh, it goes to India. Uh, it goes to China, uh, but it's only possible for much more money, it goes to the Europe when it comes to the Russia. Uh, you would be stupid that you would keep that person, even if he was a colonialist, for the price of his involvement in colonialism, uh, especially in respect to his knowledge and all that stuff not to keep him. You guarantee yourself also market and all that kind of stuff. Don't fucking put your nose into a business matters. And, you know, is just the way it is. If that would have happened in Russia, I bet uh, it would be exactly the identical situation. So, you know, this kind of stuff I have to disagree with. Let's see what else here that they, uh, Russia RT is uh, uh, instigating in. Yeah, what I was trying to say is you have to like you Russia, you have to like Russia, and to be successful, uh, you also have to like Europe, you have to like France, you have to like Britain, you have to like Germany, you have to like United States of America, just like Russians do, just like Russians do, just like Russians do. You do understand what I'm trying to say, yeah? Russians export as much as they can to, to the West, so they get the biggest, the best, the most lucrative market. Uh, and Africa, 
as much as the Russians are trying to push you away from what I stated, you should do. You must be friend regardless of your painful colonial past. Yeah, when the Russians start to instigate all these things, don't take them too seriously. Uh, no, the Russian basically is what I'm trying to say. Let's see. What yeah, he was followed. Yeah, right. Uh huh. Yes, battle for Africa. Battle for Africa is what I am doing right now, and this is the real battle for Africa. Uh, the thing about my dear African people. Uh, I like this guy waving with this flag. I like this guy despite everything. Maybe he didn't like me, I don't know, but I still like him. The thing is, my dear people, that, you know, unlike the cases with the Elon Musk or Peter Thiel uh, or, let's say, Sergei Mihailovich, uh, Sergei Brin uh, from Moscow, the parents were involved in my case already since 1988. Sergei Brin Mikhailovich was one of the people that attended this Russian Moscow school since my early childhood, knows about me. Uh, what they did with me is... Imagine for a moment, you see here, this is Kirka here. Instead, that is saying psychiatry. What they did with me is something different opposed to Sergei Mikhailovich and uh, Elon Musk and all other people beautiful people smart intelligent people they did like this to me across my eyes as I said imagine that it says here psychiatry they did like this to me when it comes to the right to work labeled me as insane compelled me, destroyed me, ripped me apart on every every possible aspect, trying to demoralize me by destroying me. Yeah. As I stated earlier, that young people dress in Nike, Levi's, and like to buy nice things, want to be successful, to be successful, you have to see yourself in successful things. You know, that's the whole fucking idea. Uh, I didn't mean to put anybody down when I said that they land contrary to the media that is suggesting the stuff that they don't have to do that. I disagree with it. People wouldn't do things if they wouldn't have to do it. Um, economic immigrants, uh, this is not a joke. Economic immigrants are in urgency state of urgency just like anybody else this is nothing to underestimate you know it's like they, they depict them like they are like taking advantage of somebody and so on so think about this video even if you're german even if you're british or french or italian or whatever you are i'm not saying anything against you because we are all in this together and the more that we're going to understand each other the more we are going to help one another and hopefully survive in this fast changing world that you know doesn't have in it anything good for anybody really really doesn't have anything good for anybody you know um a ripping individual absolutely everything so that he could not see himself in other than in failure uh, that's why I said that it's just a matter of choice so who you're gonna choose between this when you want to choose BBC or you're gonna see yourself in Russia today or what you're gonna do wherever you have seen me it's very very important that you remember my story story about psychiatry story about how they got things out of me how they depicted me to you how they demanded from you to take sides and uh, basically uh, attempts to detach from you your real you that's why I said in the beginning of the video, my five minutes, uh, known as, I'm going to call one as five minutes, that it's 90% uh, realism. Being realistic, that makes the person successful in this world. And I'm going to ask you, 
None of the people have gone through the shit I did. I really did believe it in my shoes because I really wear them at work 20 hours a day, seven days a week when at age 23 I immigrated to the United States aboard the cruise line. I really did this shit. I really did stuff like this, crazy stuff, fanatism, so that I could get me the money. But the, you know, the thing is that they always outsmart you. They have the ability to outsmart you unless you're on your own. And when I said, unless you're on your own, that means your country, your state, your land, your brain, or realistic. This is the biggest commodity in today's world. Having your place, having ability to start something without being like this. Vladimir Putin is a violent thug. This is a mass murderer. Russia is a murderer state. This is a neo-Nazi Germany. It's worse than that. If the Russia colonized you, you wouldn't even know. So let's continue with this stuff. I want to act crazy so I can help Vladimir Putin if that's possible. He's failing his way so badly. Let's see what else. I don't know why I even I got excited and I closed this down. Okay, so yeah, so he go they they follow this stuff. Oh yeah, I remember. Okay, this guy was not involved in MK Ultra. He died long time ago before I was born. All right. They talk in this video about they trash France. France no fucking good. France no good for this. France no good for that. What France did? What France friends? Okay. All right, I didn't get anything from France. I got a lot of problems from France. Um, in Britain, they might have taken some kids. It was suggested that some children eventually immigrated from Osnona Shola Garden to Britain. They depicted as they did. If that's true, I don't know. About three kids, maybe something like this. I even remember they remained in Britain. But from the promises they had about, you know, if they're going to like you, you're going to be able to stay. I learned that through the torture, through the beatings in Slovenia that were taking place, through this chaotic shit that I have gone through beginning the age four, the Princess Anne and Princess Elizabeth decided that I would not be a proper fit uh, to, to go to the British already at age 7. I suggested at age 14 and stuff like this. Bullshit. They started to kill the hope. You know what the Satanism is? Lucifer, Satan. This is the one that takes your hope, steals your hope away from you. Russia is a Satanic state is a state of the satanism, luciferism. Soviet Union did a lot of good stuff, but he was possessed with the Lucifer. But the Satan was not alone. He had the, another Satan over there in Britain and in America and all over the place. And they were trying to kill me, kill God in me. They tried to kill Christ. They tried to steal hope from me, destroy me smash me against the wall, melt me down, destroy me, make me eat myself from within. Don't let this happen. Don't let them steal hope from you. Don't ever allow this stuff. It's worse than cancer. I even learned to survive with the cancer. Cancer even became part of me. Cancer actually learned to live with me. Fuck cancer. Hope is something. Don't ever give away. Hope is not for free. When it comes to hope, it's better to be dead than to give your hope away. 
when they take hope away from you there's nothing else to steal from you because you already are dead it says right there on the video I noticed that a Chinese continued where Soviet Union uh, failed depicted Soviet Union like good, very good for Africa, helping Africa this and that, uh, dead for Africa this, uh, dead for Africa that Africa this, Soviet Union Africa, Soviet Union uh, we love Soviet Union, we love Russia Soviet Union, la 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 China did China did this, China China left at exactly at where Soviet Union stopped no Soviet Union failed. Soviet Union did not stop. Boy, Soviet Union never would stop. Soviet Union failed. Soviet Union have fallen apart, even in a war. Even war exploded. It was Dagestan, it was Chechnya, on the Balkans. It was a Serbia against Slovenia, against Croatia, against Bosnia, against Kosovo, simultaneously. Soviet Union did never stop. Soviet Union never would stop. And they claimed that uh, China, after it invested, because throughout the whole video, nobody from the West is good, It's only Russia and Soviet Union and China is good. But they bite even China by saying that Ruski even by China and says, well, uh, after they used certain uh, minerals or whatever they have used, uh, they uh, even removed the rail tracks so that uh, African people which they have used those rails for the transport could not use them. Soviet Union did not stop, Soviet Union failed. And the ladies, so, uh, Russian ladies admitted that China took off where Soviet Union have failed. Ceased to exist. Well, that means that you have no fucking right if you're saying that China is helping Africa to criticize China in absolutely any fucking sense. China removed those tracks because China needed it. Or China removed those tracks because China deemed that maybe those tracks needs to be even destroyed for whatever reason. It was Chinese property and it was up to Chinese to decide what to do with it. China has expectations and China has demonstrated is extremely realistic in respect to its expectations to the world by becoming the world power. Whatever they did, they did because they deemed that it needs to be done. Maybe because of expectations they have from Africa. It's important when you become a partner of somebody or you see in somebody partner to have a mutual interest in one another, to depend basically on one another when it comes to uh, realism, realistic expectations. And so it's very important for you. You see, I don't look so smart, so cool, like the guys that are fucking lying over there in the camera, those Russian guys. They're like violent thugs. These Russians that were involved in this stuff of violent thugs. They were not so cool when they met me in the studio in the background and in the terrain, lying over there in front of the African people and misrepresenting issues and stuff. 
Disgusting, no? The Russian people claim that they are Slavic, that we are all Slavic. Get the fuck out of here. I don't want to be part of any kind of Slavic club like this. I don't see myself as part of any kind of this. They did the stuff like this to me. They're doing it to the Ukrainian people. What do you think in Africa they would do to you? They would get a hold of you. Lucky you that they did not colonize you. It's important that you don't complain about whatever goes on about whoever you're doing business with but that you rather settle the differences in based on uh, realistic expectations you know don't try to enforce through what the russians have gestured in the video how the african people were very smart and they invited the russians so they could in an indirectly extort West in respect to investments and trade agreements. Everybody's fucking doing that kind of stuff. This is not Russians to put the nose in it. You need to be aware of those kind of tactics that Russians have used in this video against you, misrepresented you. Uh, Eventually, Russians in this video even stabbed Chinese and even stabbed you, African people, in many ways. If you pay attention to uh, the worst, what they were trying to do to you is they were trying to turn you against issues. They are using at their advantage to conquer you together with other uh, powers in this world they have agreement with as I stated Russia is not a Soviet Union and the Soviet Union was not a Christ this was not a heaven or anything like this 90% that makes person or nation successful is ability to relate to what is being realistic they talked about Brazil and they talked about India don't become a casualty of politic also talking to you in Brazil and in India not only in China don't become, don't become a, some kind of casualty uh, of some kind of politic of, of mixing uh, issues uh, that have nothing to do with you or that could get on the way to you because of some other issue that somebody uh, just doesn't you know is utilizing like a main state instrument some kind of uh, issues that are really none of it his business really there was a battle for Africa, there will be always battle for Africa, but important people is that African people win this battle together with people that are trying to help Africa. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I did this stuff again? No, I did not. All right, let's see what else here. If there's like anything else here for me to add, I think I did cover for the most part. This is the worst guy. This guy is insane, man. This guy, I don't know if if like if like anything at all comes out of his mouth. It's like relative to the truth that 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 anything possible. He, he's this like guy that is just what they did was they they bought quite a few of this Russian instigators. Uh, just again a bizarre exchange like interchange of opinions rather than facts basically he's talking about number 9 million and figures out that uh, 500,000 by 20 is 
uh, actually 10 million and stuff like this. So really, you went a little bit too high, sir. This is bullshit. I don't have time to even comment on this guy. As I said, no, not everything was bad about the Soviet Union. And that's why it's important that you don't distance yourself from anybody. Uh, that you keep up a good, strong relationship with everybody. And most important is that you stick to a reality. That you don't let yourself in some kind of mind games. Remember this word, mind games. Mind games do not. Stay realistic. It's going to help you at the United Nations to make the proper decisions which are eventually shaping this world. Don't take sides where there actually is no difference in those uh, sides with the people, with those who, through the struggle, just like yourself, are trying to get up from the knees. Don't take sides where there is a loss it represents uh, yet another side from either side life. don't do that stuff <laughs> okay my brother got really excited about this stuff here the lady also got excited about the russian flag today all right cool nice they don't like the French flag. Um, what lady is doing right now is the hatred, basically the ignorance that is coming out of her. Don't ever allow yourself to this level because in this moment you are worth nothing in the rise of the Russians. When you talk like this, you're just shit in the eyes of the Russians. They basically conquered you. The hatred is the ultimate instrument used in this world not only to divide one, but to burn one to the ground. Don't do this. Don't do this to yourself. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, China is taking an active role. Uh -huh. uh, and here they are suggesting how the Soviets, the one who inherited the Soviet Union, the biggest portion of it were Russians, as I stated. Uh, discovered gas, mineral, oil, all kinds of deposits in Africa and it was the Chinese that took advantage of it, you know. So, I would suggest you, African people, wherever you are in Africa, especially to pay attention to the China, because China is a great partner and exceptional teacher when it comes to the work ethics and uh, foremost being realistic uh, expectations don't allow anybody to exploit you everybody in this world try to exploit everybody uh, but uh, China you know China is a good teacher China was in your situation uh, China is a proof that just like China, you too can become with exceptional work ethics and foremost ability to relate yourself to reality just as successful. Oh, this is pathetic. This, uh, this is really, really pathetic. <laughs> I don't know, but... Uh, the way this documentary is made, uh, it's like more uh, a laughable. Lorsqu'il arrive que 
The lady is happy because he subscribed, she subscribed herself to the Russia channel. Uh, nice. Зимбабве это одна из опорных для Китая стран, то есть, ну вот такие, где они сидят сильнее всего, я бы сказал, это Зимбабве, Ангола, Эфиопия. Исторически, опять же, на протяжении там многих сотен лет Восточная Африка была более бедной, можно сказать, на. отказался от бумажных денег. Первый онлайн платеж в мире был в Кении. Развивающиеся страны, как Мали, могут создавать новые рабочие места, потому что нужен только компьютер и телефон. You know, uh, in uh, Afghanistan, <laughs> uh, uh, there was a guy they presented lately as somebody who invented uh, a very good design for the car, and that it's going to be like a supercar and stuff like this. The country is so poor that God have mercy on its people. And they present this this, uh, this guy, this designer, like a big success, like a big deal, like a big thing. And uh, this guy was subjected to MK Ultra, and they pretty much planted to him absolutely everything from computer to everything program, brainwash him, teach him the design, uh, and like you would have you would put these things together here. Uh, it's the stuff they did a lot to me. Uh, the only thing you would have to do is basically this, to have this. Don't go for that kind of stuff. Uh, Google Translate, Google Voice, that's a what kind of technology. Don't take, don't credit yourself with something that's not yours, come on realistic being realistic having a real expectations is what's going to make you want more not only work harder but want more and these two things are connected to one another uh, and you will be seen as a whole different person than two don't do it to yourself stuff like this Uh, they talk something about uh, how many young people is going to be and uh, how what kind of potential the Africa is and this and that. Uh, you may want to consider uh, again. You may want to consider the principle which uh, China did its best uh, to help you out with. Uh, when they remove those uh, tracks, rail tracks, and uh, when they do certain things, and uh, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff, uh, they're doing it to help you out. Uh, they are doing their best to help you out. They want relationship. They want to expand its relationship. Uh, it's very, very important that you remain true, that you remain realistic to yourself, that you you know, do not overpopulate uh, your continent. Uh, there was known as a practice in China, limit of two children per family, even one child per family. It's definitely worth paying attention uh, to the principles which China used uh, to enforce uh, the economy, basically. It's standing in the world in more and more competitive world. Only hindered by the small impediment that we never knew exactly where the mountains and rivers were. We are in our second coup d'état, in less than a discussion of the manifestants to put an end to the regime. It's what doesn't really matter to the France, because the things change. Because for a long time... All the mining regulations in the future of the country were issued иностранным гражданам. Стандартами, которыми они следуют в следующей лицензии в стране выданы иностранным гражданинам, который был на их госслужбе. И что об интересах Нигерии при выдаче этих лицензий не было даже речи. 
Uh, you see what this guy is doing. Uh, you see what they're doing. He is he is laughing. He's humiliating like this in a camera. Uh, something I already discussed about. Uh, oil market in, in, in Europe uh, always consider whatever is best for you. You see how they portray you, ridicule you, and they try to make the point. Uh, your, uh, you, you are a subject, your, your oil export is subject to the Russian competition. Just like uh, Saudi Arabia oil export is a subject to a competition from the Russian. And I told you about the Russian reserves, about their oil export and so on. Yeah? This is evil, this is just guys diabolical. Actually, when you, when you consider what I stated to you, you understand this is a little satan right there in front of you. Yeah, British colonial officials, yes, and what? As I stated, nobody exported oil to the Russia, yeah? Ruski is not going to tell you. What is he trying to tell you, huh? That's what he's trying, he's, he's, he's smiling, he's laughing in your face, and he's going to demonstrate to you, exactly what you have seen earlier, he's going to demonstrate you the dirty oil, uh, how they're pouring in like, like you're stupid or something like this. That's Russia, basically. Understand Russia from the proper point of view. Black Mona Lisa and stuff like this. The guy is happy because uh, he never studied in France and so on and so forth. My friend, uh, if you would, and that's the biggest problem with your country, with your people, your horizon would be expanded. Uh, the more you know, the more you see, the more you know, my friends. The more interactions you have, the more people you meet, the more you exchange, the more you read, the more you know, you know knowledge this is not based on a toilet paper uh it is something else and if you can get that spiritually wise mentally wise uh, intellectually wise from your own homeland uh, you just like in slovenia like in russia like in poland like anywhere in eastern europe or in the united states of america or in France or in Germany, you go to the library and you pick a different literature so that you can expand your mind and you can have your people from your country not only write maybe masterpieces uh, which you yourself preferably uh, would relate yourself to obviously that colonialism past is a painful one but the thing about it is, think the children in a first grade, in a second grade, in a grammar school where it all starts, in the kindergarten where it all starts, uh, could already start to expand their little minds, which would be really, really beneficial for them throughout the life. Don't, don't, don't get into this stuff like this. Don't do this to yourself. Yeah, I, I'm happy that the gentleman is proud about himself, he should be, he must be, uh, this is a must for you to exist, uh, it's actually called a nationalism, uh, but do not reject what otherwise you could benefit from, benefit from and what uh, uh, Russia is using at full potential to benefit from and take advantage of you. Don't do that to yourself. Yeah, 500,000 is the France, it's already 500,000. And, uh, you know, he said 9 million is 20 multiplied with the 500,000. It's not uh, 9 million, it's 10 million according to his math. He's got a wrong map in his head, but that's okay. Let's see what else is like anything else here to comment for me. Uh, I doubt that anybody wants to uh, including in Brazil and so on, that they glorified uh, they did this and this in a such a such an awkward way that uh, whoever watched this this documentary, uh, it appears to me 
uh, whether that be a person in Brazil or a person in, in France or a person in whatever, uh, maybe in the United States of America or in Israel, where they, in exchange for minerals and for the oil or Britain, whatever it is, they gave weaponry. Uh, whoever is watching this, even in Russia, uh, especially you in Africa, I'm sure that you understand that this is a bipolar bullshit. <laughs> what what Russians align so much in this documentary that they completely lost touch with reality. Don't allow the loss, the touch with reality, the loss of the touch with reality to become part of you. Lies will never bring you to any place. Expectations and reality is what makes the 90% a successful person in today's world. Let's continue. We are almost at the end of this uh, video. These two were involved in it. Uh, this is insane. Uh, this girl supposedly uh, was interested in me and I was really not interested in her. There were a million other females that were much more appealing than she is. Uh, she just needs to be. Uh, and I am not a better choice for her. I'm not saying I'm a better choice. I'm much older than the student she found in Russia. <laughs> and I am extremely pleased with the fact that the two are happy together. But as I stated, uh, I'm also an older person and everything. Really, 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 she's better off with him, in my opinion. Do not allow in absolutely, because they involved so many anti-ultra issues in it, reality to be in, replaced with illusions, with the lies. What at large have taken place inside of the United Nations. They're not going to take you on a long run you will fail and remember in Syria today you get to choose <laughs> not today <laughs> but already for some time it was like this for some time maybe it will stop because of Ukraine but if it was not for Ukraine that kind of stuff I'm talking about never even would stop yes control your population uh, be oriented what i love the most maybe about the china is that it's one and a half billion people i think i was told or the chinese told me and so did the japanese that i must watch how many calories i take and i eat i agree with it and thank you for advice The only thing left for me to say to you is, the Chinese told me, that you eat so much, you eat so much. Yes, I do. I do. Uh, they told me, for whatever the cost might be, we always, we're never going to be hungry that much that we would not be also exporting enormous amount of food. In fact, they told me it doesn't matter how the situation is, we're going to increase our work production of crops, everything, to the, such a degree that we will be capable to feed the entire planet. I watched a documentary the other day about Africa, where people are, because of the colonialism, because of the oppression, demotivated to, to live like a people literally the food issue because their main concern was a full stomach now that's a crime against humanity when your main concern in every day becomes your stomach to be full and some of those guys, those African guys and ladies, had actually big stomachs. It's because of the stress that I eat so much. 
it's because of the stress that these people don't realize that they should also concentrate on other issues so that they will improve everything for themselves. But everything got to do with reality expectations and what makes a person more successful. Hopefully my five minutes, that's how I'm going to name this video, is going to make you also more successful. Yes, and stay friend with everybody. It's extremely important. Stay friend absolutely with everybody. Uh, and foremost, honest with yourself. This was a Russia Today RT, uh, but as I stated, there was thousands of other documentaries that this colonialist have used me as a main superstar in these documentaries. Not to depict me in it. Uh, they rated me, after all, as a paranoid schizophrenic. Hospitalized me. Did like this with me. Uh, kinda. Do you want to live in this kind of world? Thank you. Today is July the 18th. 2023. Take care of yourself wherever you are. God bless you.